Can the electricity grid be carbon-free by 2035? We are fortunate to have many different sources of electricity. These include coal, natural gas, nuclear power, hydro, wind, and solar. Each of these has its own pluses, which is why we need all of them. This diversity of sources has enabled the nation's electricity grid to provide reliable, resilient, affordable, and increasingly cleaner electricity that has helped us grow economically, create jobs, and improve environmental quality. On the other hand, the grid has begun shifting rapidly away from traditional sources of electricity, such as coal, and increasing its dependence on lower carbon and carbon-free sources of electricity, especially wind and solar power. Some policymakers want to speed up this shift by requiring electricity to be carbon-free within the next 15 years. This would be too fast, because eliminating the use of coal and natural gas, which are responsible for more than 60% of our nation's electricity, would leave consumers with less reliable and more expensive electricity. Transitioning our national grid to 100% carbon-free in 15 years sounds like a great idea, but it's really not when you consider that it took several decades and trillions of dollars to build the system that we have now. What are some of the problems with rushing to completely change the electricity grid in such a short period of time? For one thing, transmission lines to carry more wind and solar power will have to be at least doubled, according to an MIT study. We're gonna see a lot more transmission lines going up, a lot more generation going up around the country. And siting of those things is very controversial, very costly, and it takes a long time. So if you started them today, they wouldn't all even be built by 2035. Building the transmission facilities to get the power from these remote locations to where you and I need it can easily cost hundreds of billions of dollars that you and I as ratepayers need to pay. Wind and solar produce electricity only when the wind is blowing and the sun is shining. This means they cannot be counted on 24-7. Dispatchable electricity sources like coal that are available 24-7 are essential to complement wind and solar and to help prevent blackouts like we saw this past year in California, Texas, and across the entire Midwest. We can see what happened down in Texas when the power went out just for a couple of days. And that same type of scenario is the most critical from a manufacturing standpoint. A blip in the power causes an entire facility to shut down. Most plants are designed to run 24 hours a day and they need a stable, reliable power supply Battery storage could also back up renewables, but battery storage is still too expensive to be used widely. Technologies such as carbon capture utilization and storage also show promise, but it's risky to assume they can be proven cost-effective and widely deployed soon. Direct air capture and hydrogen could be game-changers years down the road, but not now. More than 185,000 jobs are supported by coal-fired electric power generation. All would be at risk, as would some of the 686,000 jobs supported by the natural gas industry. It will take time and resources to help these workers and save their communities. Almost one-third of U.S. coal and gas power plants are less than 20 years old. These relatively young power plants will have to be shut down to decarbonize the grid. We're going to have something called stranded assets. So the old facilities that we are deciding to retire early, consumers will also be paying for the cost of those. So they're paying both for the old and the new at the same time. Decarbonizing the grid would mean less fuel diversity and less fuel security. This will negatively impact the grid's reliability and resilience. The nation's wholesale power markets, which cover large parts of the country, were designed to handle traditional electricity resources, not large amounts of renewable power. New rules will need to be developed to operate a carbon-free grid. In addition to all of these obstacles, some experts have estimated that decarbonizing the grid could almost double today's electricity prices. 
Consumers are going to bear the cost, unfortunately, of all of this new infrastructure going in. A diverse energy mix, including coal, is absolutely necessary to maintain reliability and resilience and even affordability of the power that we all need. A strategy that allows time to develop innovative technologies and that relies on all, not just a few, electricity resources is the best way to reduce carbon emissions. Reliable, secure, resilient, affordable. Learn more at americaspower.org.